In this video, I'm going to show you how to trace a colored image. Um, I have how to import a Google image, um, but it's black and white. And I do have um, this process, but it's inside another video. So I needed one that was specific for only tracing a colored image because there's been a lot of questions lately on how to get a layered image um, in Troy Young's Facebook group. And you can find the link for that below in the description. So I went ahead and went to Google and I downloaded an image. Now, the first thing that you wanna do is make sure your image resolution is at least 500 by 500. Sometimes you can get away with 400, but I typically shoot for at least 500 and above. Now, if you don't know how to check that, um, let me just type in NFL logos here and go to images. And if you hover over, you'll get this little bar down here. It tells you it's 905 by 415. This one is 902 by 825. Okay, just make sure that it's 500 by 500. All right. <clears throat> now the next thing that you want to do is trace it. So let's go to path, trace bitmap, and this box will come up. Now typically with black and white, it's on brightness cutoff, and you can adjust your thresh threshold to um, thicken lines or thin lines. Um, but for colors, you just click on colors, count your colors that you have, click and enter that here, and then click update. Make sure you have all of your colors. And I don't have remove background checked because my eye is the same color as the white background. Um, but I'll check it, and then I'll click OK. All right. So now, as you can see, this is my image, and I have no white now with my eye. So let me control Z, control Z until I have my image again. And then let's uncheck, remove background, and let's update. And let me say too that if, if this was a green background, you would want to increase this to five because then obviously you'd have five colors, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and delete that. Now, here is my group of four. Here is my image. Look down here before you delete anything and make sure that you're deleting your image, all right? And then what I'll do is I will click this ungroup icon until it says no groups down at the bottom, all right? You can use the shortcut, which is shift control G. And to find that, go to object ungroup and shift control G, all right? Now I'm going to deselect everything. You can use this little icon here, just click somewhere off of your, um, on your page. And then I'm gonna start separating all the colors, make sure they're all here. Well, they're all here again, except for the white. So in that case, what you're gonna have to do is you're going to have to fill the eye with the paint bucket to make another layer, which will be the white layer for the eye. Okay, um, now just so I don't have to, uh, let me go to my fill and stroke panel. Let me just get rid of this. There we go. Um, and lower this opacity here. And let me show you. Now, see how there's not much room here? You can increase this by going to control zero, which is um, an outset, and make that larger so that you don't have to have it exactly lined up, all right? Let me go ahead and change this back to 100%, and there's my eye. All right, now what we have, <clears throat> excuse me, are these two. And really all we need is the yellow for the beak, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this here. And I'm going to select both of these, 
go to my align and distribute panel and align them vertically and horizontally and then I'm going to do path difference and as you can see that just left me with um, the yellow beak what it does let me go back is it subtracts the bottom layer from the top layer it's important that you remember that because if you try to do it the opposite way around you're not going to get the result that you need so it subtracts the under layer from the top layer all right um so let me go ahead and do that again Another path difference and now you can see that this square is way bigger than what this is well if you zoom in you're going to see that you have little bits um, that didn't delete so in that case go to your node editor right underneath your selection arrow and you'll get all of your nodes that are in this graphic what you need to do is just left click and select all the ones that you don't need and hit delete on the keyboard and be careful not to get any that are in the beak or your beak is going to be deformed. And if you do, just hit Control Z and start over. Now, you can see that I still have a lot of space. This bounding box should be touching each side of the graphic. Okay, it's touching here, touching here, touching here, but not here, which means I have a node down here somewhere. So if I click on that, as you can see, there they are. And now it's touching. Okay, so. That's that. All right. Now I need this. Do I want to layer this on? Let me select that and move it to the top. On top of that, like that, or do I want to delete the maroon color underneath? That's a decision that you'll have to make. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like this. All right. So now we have our layers that we need. <clears throat> to make up this graphic. Now, the one thing that I didn't do was enlarge this yellow piece so that I don't have to fit it exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and control zero and enlarge that a bit. I'm going to also do it for the black so that I don't have bits of maroon pieces sticking out underneath and that's it now what i can do is just save it and let me go ahead and get rid of my my logo stuff here i'll go to let me downsize it so i usually try to make it smaller that way i don't have issues when it comes into um design space. So let me go ahead and let me open this first. I'll go to file, save as, um, I'll just name it red or cardinal, and I'll save it as a plain SVG. Okay. Now I will go to design space Should have had this open, sorry. And I'll click on new project. I'll go to upload, upload image, browse, uh, desktop, red, SVG, open. Click continue. I must have had some text left behind. insert image and you can see i have yellow white maroon and black okay uh i have a stroke on my white all right so let's go back there's an issue what's 
if you have a stroke on any of your elements, let me ungroup everything. If you have a stroke on any of your elements here, what's going to happen is it's going to double cut. It's going to cut around the graphic, and then it's going to cut the stroke, which is going to give you a double cut, and it's going to leave a space, because if you take that out, then you're going to have a space. And my stroke is on my white piece, looks like. So let me hold shift and click on this, and I'll just go ahead and do it for all of them. By holding shift and clicking on this X, it turns the stroke off. If you want to turn the stroke on, then you would hold shift and just click on a color. Let me show you right quick. If I hold shift and I click on red, it adds that stroke. If I hold shift and I click on the X, it turns it off. All right. Now, let me go back. <laughs> Sorry about that. I should have checked it before. Hold Alt to select what's underneath. I'm not going to worry about lining it up perfectly. And I'm going to file save as. I'm going to save it as the red SVG and I'm going to replace the one that I have. I'm going to go back to design space, delete this, go to upload, upload image, browse, red SVG, open, continue. It's funny how it tells me that I have a text error and there's no text. Uh, okay. So let's insert this. All right, a black, red, white, yellow. So now what I can do is I can ungroup it. And there are the layers. All right. Now it looks like there's a stroke on here, but that's not. That's the cut line. All right. So now if I go to make it, I should have four different mats. Here's the white eye. Here's the black cardinal. Here's the yellow beak. And here's the red cardinal. Okay. So that's how you make a colored, um, layered SVG from a Google image. I hope this has helped. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.